how do I use rubbets for center stage? So today we're going to be talking about how you can use robots to make a robot that can participate in the FTC Challenge Center Stage. The Robots is Annie Mark's new build system designed specifically to work on accessibility, iteration, and progression. Robots was designed to use a simple hole pattern with a half inch pitch and a number 10 hole. This makes it quite accessible for new users who may be just getting into the robot building, but is also still usable for advanced users who may have done this for a while. This year's game Center Stage focuses on robots being able to pick up what are called pixels and being able to score them on a backdrop. There are a lot of interesting design challenges when focusing on center stage, such as the height restrictors, as well as the extension needed to place on the backdrop. So here we have the Robots Center Stage bot made completely out of Robots Core Kit with instructions found on animark.com slash robots. First, we're gonna talk about our drivetrain a little bit. So in this case, we're using a very simple drivetrain where one motor powers all the wheels on a side. Here we have a belt, and that allows you to transfer the torque from the motor in the back all the way to the wheel in the front, which you'll also notice is an Omni wheel. This helps with mobility around the field by preventing drag. In this particular case, we're using a NeverS 19 to one ratio, which is a fairly good ratio for driving around the field. One of the great things about Robots is its ability to be iterated on. For example, the open gearing allows teams to modify their gear ratios to iterate on their own drive characteristics. So one thing that we noticed about the game challenge this year is you need to be able to reach both up and out. With this in mind, we made sure that the tower portion of our robot is angled backward. What this allows you to do is it allows us to keep the height of the robot fairly low. In fact, this robot can go under the height restrictor. By having the pivot point of this arm all the way back, it allows us to reach quite a bit far behind our robot. For our arm gearbox, we're using a 51 to 1 gear motor and additionally using an external gear pair of 60 and 40. Overall, this increases the amount of torque we have, which will allow us to have a more refined movement of the arm as well as helping us later when we try to climb. On the back of the robot, you might notice some rubber bands. The rubber bands are there to act as a counterbalance to help hold the arm in position, making it much easier for teams that may be having less experience with precision arm control. On the end of the arm, we have a single joint controlled by one of our new Antimark programmable servos. What this joint allows you to do is to have more refined control over where you're putting your game piece. With the claw in the fully retracted position, the robot fits inside the maximum starting configuration. Having the ability to articulate your joint allows you to both place from the front on the lower levels or place on the back for the higher levels. So on the front of the robot, we have a roller claw. So one of the things that we like about a roller claw is it helps take away some of the difficulties with alignment that a driver might have. Because with the roller spinning, it generally does a great job sucking in a game piece. So in this particular case, our claw can hold one game piece. And this allows us to raise the arm and either eject the game piece out the front, or as stated before, drop the game piece out the back. Overall, we think the ability to place on both the front and the back side of the robot can be very useful depending on your team's strategy and how many times you want to turn and maneuver around the field. Astute observers may notice there's a hook on our robot. This hook is used to grab onto the rigging in the end game to allow the robot to climb. In terms of physical hardware, the last thing we'll talk about are the paneling. So the panels on this side are perforated polycarb on the same pitch spacing as the rest of robots, making it really easy to mount to stuff. In this particular case, it can act as a deterrent for things trying to get inside your robot, as well as providing great real estate for things such as team numbers, alliance markers, as well as sponsor logos. Most of the design of this robot is very straightforward. You have an arm controlled by a single motor, a wrist controlled by a single positional servo, and a claw driven by a continuous rotation servo. Overall, this system runs on three motors and two servos, making it incredibly expandable. When evaluating this year's game and what components came in the core kit, we chose to make a simplified robot for ease of assembly and use for teams. Additionally, this robot is highly modifiable. There are plenty of ways teams can elect to upgrade this robot or even change it completely. 
One thing teams might want to do once they get more comfortable driving the robot is they may determine that they want a faster robot. This should be fairly straightforward, and teams have multiple different ways they can attempt to do this. For example, teams could switch the gear ratio on their robot by putting a larger gear on the motor side and a smaller gear on the wheel side, the robot will drive faster. Alternatively, if the robot currently drives too fast, they might consider flip-flopping that and making the robot drive a little slower. Another way you could change how your robot drives is by swapping the motor. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a 19 to one gear ratio. Teams that might wanna go a little faster can elect to swap out the motor from a 19 to a 14 to give them an extra boost of speed. You could always swap your wheel. So for example, if you went to a larger wheel, this might affect some of the other dynamics of your robot, but a larger wheel with the same ratio will move faster. So some teams may be a little bit more advanced in their control loops and may find that they want their arm to move a little faster. As mentioned before, teams can always change out the ratio by either swapping the gears or even swapping the motor. Due to the fact that we're using this arm to climb, teams will want to test to make sure that their robot still has enough torque to get up at the end of a match if you adjust your ratio. Teams may find they want to adjust the speed on their claw, whether it's using one of our super speed servos on the intake or even on the wrist to make it move up and down faster. This is very straightforward due to the built-in mounting pattern on the servo. So when we built this robot, we wanted to make sure that the robot could be sufficient at playing about 70 to 80% of the game tasks. There are other game tasks this robot is not designed to be able to complete, such as the drone. Teams will be wise to note there is a lot of open space on this robot to add mechanisms such as a drone launcher or even a mechanism to allow them to go under the stage door. On the claw, you'll notice it can only hold one game piece. Teams may find they want to spend some time looking into ways they could potentially hold onto two game pieces. And that's how you use robots for center stage.